hanging gray clouds moving into the area around Lindsey Nelson Stadium. Maybe a few raindrops coming our way over the next hour or so, but nothing that should deter play. A fantastic midweek matchup on tap. The Vols and the Wildcats are underway with a swinging strike. And it's 0-1 on Chuck Ingram with the fastball at 94. Ingram has settled into this leadoff spot for K-State, hitting 318 this season. 14 hits, seven of them have gone four extra bases. And a 1-1 count. As the pitch comes from Combs, it rides high, ball two. Aaron Combs now in his second season on Rocky Top. Had a great junior college career at the College of Central Florida. Went to the JUCO World Series and then rode with the Vols all the way to Omaha last season. And now getting his first start of this 2024 campaign as a junior. Evens the count of two balls and two strikes. And the right-hander downhill with a 2-2. That is strike three call. Paints the outside corner, and Ingram is retired on strikes to begin the ball game. Just some outside cheddar, and no answer from Ingram. One up, one down for Combs on the bump. We'll set the Tennessee defense after the first pitch to Brendan Jones, which is sliced straight back into the screen. Dylan Dryling out in left, Hunter Ensley patrolling center field, Kavaris Tierce in right, Billy Amick on the hot corner at third, Dean Curley the shortstop, Christian Moore at second base with Blake Burke at first. And catching the first ball of the at bat was Cannon Peebles. Ball and a strike on the K State center fielder, Brendan Jones. And the 1 1. Curve ball over the plate called strike two. Jones, the junior from Greenbrier, Tennessee, the mid state, about three and a half hours from Knoxville, hitting 351 this season, including tied for the team high five doubles as he pops it up foul and out of play. Nice early March evening here for baseball with sunny and 70 to begin the day. These gray crowd, clouds have come in and brought a little breeze with it. As that's high and outside, evens the count, two balls and two strikes. So the breeze blowing into the yard consistently between five and 10 miles an hour from right to left. And 65 degrees in Knoxville at the moment. Jones back in the box. And Combs winds and fires his 2-2. Back up the middle and into center field. A one-out single for Brendan Jones. Past the outstretch curly, and K-State has its first base runner of the ball game. Good piece of hitting by Jones. Takes it right back up the middle. Now a runner on for Kalen Culpepper in the three spot. Combs into the stretch, double play depth up the middle as Culpepper takes ball one. Kalen Culpepper, the junior, hitting 302 this season. And started every game at shortstop for the Wildcats. Combs uses his lone pickoff attempt of the at-bat there. This is a Kansas State team that likes to steal bases. 35 stolen bags on the year, which is first in the Big 12, fifth in the nation. As the breaking ball just misses outside. Two balls and no strikes. Culpepper in the driver's seat. A lot of pop in this right-handed bat. Leads the team with four homers this season. And he takes up an in ball three. Right 
Rides high. So the runner went to second, but it was ball four. So it did not matter. Jones will not pick up the stolen base, but does move into scoring position as the first walk is issued on four pitches to Kalen Culpepper. And it puts two on with just one out. So plenty of speeds on the base pads as Brady Day gets ready to climb into the box. Cannon Peeble just went over to the Tennessee dugout to get his equipment checked. They're now ready to go. Big 12 player of the week, Brady Day. Takes a breaking ball. Outside, 1 and 0. Oh. Day hitting 359 this season. Two doubles, a triple, and three dingers. Tied for the team high with 15 runs batted in. Prime opportunity in the top of the first. Swing and a miss. to wait, and the throw sails into center field. Might have nicked Jones, but everyone advances 90 feet. And now the Wildcats have two in scoring position at the top of the first with just one out. So the error on the pickoff throw from Combs Puts two into scoring position, takes the double play ball, traditional double play ball anyway, out of the question. As Day swings and misses, strike two. Kansas State, a good program. They were 24th in a couple of the preseason polls through the first few weeks, just on the outside knocking. Two balls and two strikes. A one out single and a walk, followed by an error. And two in scoring position as Day launches it up the middle into center field, base hit. Jones is in to score. Culpepper windmilled behind him, a two RBI single for Brady Day in the top of the first, puts the Wildcats in front by a pair. Big 12 player of the week picks up right where he left off in a two strike count. Brady Day rifles it up the middle and drives home too. Picks up his 16th and 17th RBIs of the season to now lead K-State outright. Ball one was outside to Nick English and that forces a mound visit from Cannon Peebles. Peebles talking things over with his junior right-hander, Aaron Combs. Combs getting his first start of the season. Has made three prior appearances all out of the bullpen for Tennessee, including a perfect inning in relief on Saturday in the win over Bowling Green. Meeting is adjourned, and English climbs back into the box. Another pickoff move over to first, but Day back safely in time. You can tell the Tennessee team very aware of Kansas State speed. Brady Day, four for six in stolen base attempts this season. Double play depth up the middle, the 1-0. Is flipped over the plate, strike one. Pretty breaking ball off the right arm of Combs. Two balls and a strike. English, the right fielder, hitting 391. That's the highest 
Batting average in the starting nine for K-State as he comes up empty on that hack. Even at two balls and two strikes. Break even offer. Breaking ball. Strike three call. Second strike out of the half inning for Aaron Combs. And right over the inner half. No doubt about it. And no contest from English. So there are two out. A runner on first and a 2 nothing lead for Kansas State. Jaden Loebliner, the DH. Takes a fastball for a strike at 92. Loebliner hitting 359 this season. Does have some pop, three homers. And prior to the day hit this inning, was tied for the team high and runs batted in. Ball and a strike despite Peebles' best effort with the frame job behind the plate. Low blind of the sophomore. Takes inside, two balls and a strike. This is a Tennessee staff that threw eight pitchers in its seven inning run roll victory against Bowling Green on Sunday. The first of five games at home here this week. Another pickoff move. Not in time. A couple of midweeks, and then a three-game series at home against Illinois this weekend. But a laborious first inning for Combs, and he's behind three balls and a strike. Green light count. Loeb liner, takes strike two. <laughs> Payoff pitch is strike three call. Fastball in the top of the zone. And so Aaron. Grad student in his fifth season now, making his team high fifth start of the year. 1-0, 4.70 ERA in 15 and the third innings of work. Borma, the southpaw comes downhill with his first pitch. High and out to Christian Moore, who leads off this Tennessee offense. Christian Moore, Blake Burke, Billy Amick, 1, 2, and 3 in the order. And the 1-0, high and out, two balls and no strikes. Kavaris Tierce in the cleanup spot, followed by Robin Villeneuve. Cannon Peoples will bat sixth. Dylan Dryling, Dean Curley, Hunter Ensley, seven, eight, and nine in the lineup for Tennessee offensively. Two balls and a strike to the leadoff man, Christian Moore. As Warma rocks and deals. Check swing on the appeal to first. No swing, says Matthew Bates. So the count moves to three balls and a strike on Moore. 372 out of the leadoff spot. And he is aboard. Five pitch walk earned by Christian Moore. And that is the first walk issued by Borma today. Strikeouts really is MO. 28 punch outs coming into the contest. That's best in the Big 12. Coming off a year where he had 95 Ks on the hill, fifth in the conference. And he slips into the stretch, facing the ever dangerous Blake Burke, who aggressively takes strike one. Burke, the junior, 341 hitter. 15 hits, 10 of which have been for extra bases. One ball and one strike. Sweeper over the plate, called strike one and two. And 
Burke down on strike, swinging. Sling and slider goes to work for Borma, and the Big 12 leader in strikeouts picks up another as he cards out number one. Hands at Lindsey Nelson Stadium clapping together for Billy Amick. Clemson transfer off to a raw, red hot start for Tennessee. And he bounces one on two hops to Culpepper, the shortstop. Throws to second for one, turn to first, won't be in time. But the lead runner Moore is erased off the base paths as Amick reaches on the fielder's choice. Two down. Defensively for Kansas State, Ingram, Jones, and English left to right in the outfield. Rivera, the third baseman. Culpepper just made the play at short, firing to his middle infield teammate, Day. Bishop at first with Pelletier behind the plate, catching Borma. He leads off with a strike to Kavaris Tierce. One on with two out. Tierce slices a foul. Really good start to the year for the sophomore, Kavaris Tierce, 429 offensively. Has started all but one game for Tennessee this season. A double and four home runs. And he goes down swinging on three pitches. Two strikeouts in the first for Owen Borma. We've played one in Knoxville. In First pitch to Daniel Rivera, rides high for ball one. Seven, eight, and nine in the K-State order as Aaron Gomes goes back to work after a 31 pitch first inning. There's a strike, one and one. Rivera, a senior, transfer from Southern New Hampshire. And in a two-strike hole, hitting 265 this season, but trying to get things going offensively, coming off a one-for-eight weekend against UMass Lowell. As Combs settles in and delivers the two-strike pitch. Swing and a miss. Four outs, all via the punch out for Aaron Combs. And that is the first one of the swinging variety. Rivera fishing off the plate and was late. One down as Pelletier takes a big hack and comes up empty. First trip to the dish for Rafael Pelletier, the left-hand hitting catcher. Breaking ball, misses outside. 2.33 to start the season for Pelletier offensively. Honorable mention all-conference last season as the everyday catcher. High baseball IQ behind the plate for Pelletier. 2-1 pitch, up and out, three balls and a strike. Combs trying to give this Tennessee pitching staff a lengthy start here today. And he issues his second walk of the outing. As Pelletier is aboard with one down. Three prior outings this season for Combs. Two and a third innings against Oklahoma. Got the tough luck. Loss in that one in extras. As David Bishop slices it up the middle. Moore to his left makes the catch. Really nice range from Christian Moore running to his left, and he snags out number two. Okay. 
Another look, great jump, and just in the outstretched black leather. More showing off why he was on the Golden Spikes watch list at the start of the year. Back to the top of the order, and Chuck Ingram, who struck out his first time up. High and tight, two balls and no strikes. Ingram, the transfer in from Wichita State. As Pelletier takes his slight lead off first. Ground ball left side, Curley deep in the hole, can't handle it. That bounces in the left field and puts two on with two out in the second. Was going to be a tough play. Ingram runs well down the line, but Curley, the freshman shortstop, caught peeking up down the baseline. Another look. It's going down as a single. In the official scorebook. Two on and two out with a strike to Brendan Jones, who singled and scored his first time up. It's a Tennessee team that plays pretty tight defense. 988 fielding percentage, just five errors through a dozen games. But an error that put two in scoring position from Combs on a pickoff move in the first, and then it was a tough play on that single. But a ball that skipped into left, that would ordinarily be stopped. Chance to get out of here with no damage, though, if you're Combs. Ball and a strike to Jones. On the 1-1, one -one, Jones thought about it. Pio third did not go around. So Jones ahead. Two balls and a strike. As Combs peaks at second and fires, Jones ramps it down to first, smothered by Burke. And the side is retired. So Aaron Combs strands two on the base pads in the second. No further runs across for Kansas. On to the bottom of the second in Knoxville. Five, six, and seven in the Tennessee order. Robin Villeneuve takes a strike off the left arm of Owen Borma. Back to work for Kansas State. Issued a leadoff walk, but then worked around it. A couple of strikeouts in his first inning. Villeneuve tips it into the mid strike two. How about this start for Robin Villeneuve? The transfer from Weatherford College to Junior College. 476 at the plate. 10 for his first 21. As he takes ball one, outstanding start for the man from Canada, the Quebec native. Two strike pitch, slider strike three. Boy, that has really been working. The sweeper from Borma results in his third strike out of the outing. Kind of hides it coming out of that three-quarter slot. Got a lot of horizontal tilt to it. Third strikeout, one down for Cannon Peebles with the bases empty. And the NC State transfer takes the ball high and outside. Called strike. One and one. Former rocks and fires. Line to deep center field. Jones on the way back in front of the warning track. Jumps up and can't handle it. Bounced out of the glove. Peebles chugging into second. A runner in scoring position with one out for Tennessee. Brendan Jones got a pretty good jump on it, and it looked like he was going to make the catch at the last second. Struck really well. 
off the bat of Peebles, but you see here Jones jumped up and just couldn't complete the catch. Hit the palm of the glove, not the webbing. And the end result is a one-out double for Peebles, his fifth of the season. As Dylan Dryling takes a strike. So the first hit of the game surrendered by the lefty Borma, who slides into the stretch now. Dryling, a 324 hitter for Tennessee, sophomore left fielder. Two balls and a strike. Lifted high in the air, center field and deep. Jones on the way back and watches it fly. Dylan Dryling has homered in back-to-back -back games and we are tied in the second. That was corked hard off the bat of Dylan Dryling. And exactly what you're looking for if you're Tennessee. Sat on it over the outer half of the plate and drives it out of the yard to left center. So Dryling with his third home run of the season. Picks up his 11th and 12th ribbies of the year and ties thing up at two apiece. Dean Curley swivels out of the way. Two balls and no strikes. Curley, the true freshman shortstop for Tennessee. Getting his first taste of big time college baseball. Two bounces to third. Rivera behind the bag. Fires to first. Two out. For a second, like that ball may have had a chance at hook and foul, but it's an all turf surface here at Lindsey Nelson Stadium, so pretty much every bounce is going to be true. And that hugged the white turf line right over the third base pillow. Two outs on the strong throw from Rivera. Two down as Hunter Ensley launches the first pitch. Foul into the stands, which continue to fill up at Lindsey Nelson Stadium. Two twenty-nine at the plate to begin the season for Ensley, the junior. Another sweeping strike. Oh, the 0-2, Ensley takes ball one. <laughs> Two out base runner. Just rode high and in. Ensley plunked for the first time this season. Right above the elbow guard. Maybe the top half of that guard was able to absorb a little bit of that contact. But he flips it back to the top of the order in Christian Moore. Moore drew a five pitch walk his first time to the plate. Preseason, All-American. He was the MVP at the Clemson Regional for Tennessee last year on their way to Omaha. And another trip to the College World Series. Now a chat as Pelletier.
comes to talk things over with Borma. It is a veteran battery, Pelletier and Borma. Borma now in his second season at Kansas State. Transferred in from the University of Northwestern, D3 school up in Minnesota, where he had a nice career, and then settled in strong in the Big 12. As Moore launches to center field, gets down for a base hit. Ensley around second. He goes corner to corner. And that's where they are for Tennessee. First and third with two out in the second. It's a good piece of hitting from Christian Moore. And Tennessee has had a couple of well-hit balls right back up the middle. Telltale sign that you're timing it up well. Two on with two out for the big bat, Blake Burke. And the lefty goes down the left field line. Opposite field into the corner. Ensley's in to take the lead. Moore windmilled around third. Here comes the throw to the plate. It is well in time on the relay from left field. A nice throw from the shortstop Culpepper to cut down what would have been the second run, but a home run. Ten innings of work for Snead. 2-0 on the hill with a 2.7 ERA. His first pitch to Kalen Culpepper is 98 that misses. One ball and no strikes. Sneeds run a couple up into triple digits. We'll see if he has it here tonight. 1-0. Bounced off the middle. Curly to his left. One out. So a little more on the numbers here for Nate Sneed. Really good start to the year. 2-0, 2.7 ERA in 10 innings of work. Six walks to 12 punch outs. Batters hitting 176 against him. And coming off of a nice start to his career at Wichita State. Also has a save this season. That came against High Point. And he changes things up. 83 on the top half of the zone. It's nothing and two on Brady Day in the cleanup spot. Another one to short. Curly charges. Two out. Day is plenty of speed hustling down the line. But not going to beat that one out. Two solid plays up the middle by Curley. And there are quickly two out as English sprays it foul off the top of the net. So back to English, who is 0 for 1 today, struck out against Combs. True freshman. Takes a ball. Just needs 1-1. One, one. High at 99. No chase and English in the driver's seat, coming off a nice weekend against UMass Lowell, hit 500, 5 for 10, but had his first collegiate grand slam as he pops a foul and out of play. Base is empty and a full count with two down and a one run game. The payoff pitch popped up right field. Tierce. Retires the side in order. Job well done in relief by Nate Sneed. 
Bottom of the third at Lindsey Nelson Stadium. It is the three, four, and five spots for Tennessee. Vols lead by one after a three-run second. Owen Borma back to work for Kansas State. His first pitch to Billy Amick is launched high and deep to left, and that is way gone. Oh, Billy Barrels back at it again. A tape measure blast for Amick, and it's 4-2 Tennessee. Only question was if it was going to stay fair down the line, but Billy Amick wastes no time and jumps all over it for his eighth home run of the season. And now he's driven home 19 runs. Oh man, that might have rolled all the way to the Tennessee River. Ball and no strikes on Kavaris Tierce. Who takes outside, two balls and no strikes. And it's a night where the breeze has been blowing into the yard, not by a lot, but certainly not playing. In big win, that's a tough play. No play, infield single for Tierce. A bouncy ball in the infield turf. That's going to be tough from the jump. Tears hustling down the line, and well, the half is help his scorching 429 batting average to the plate. One on, nobody out. Now 4-2 Tennessee as Robin Villeneuve takes down and inside. Ball with no strikes. Villeneuve struck out swinging his first time up. Kansas State, the start of a tough week. They are on the road in Knoxville tonight, and then they will head to Clemson, South Carolina to take on the defending ACC champs tomorrow. Villain have tagged out by Bishop, one down as Tierce advances to second. Runner in scoring position for Cannon Peebles. Cobbled up by Pelletier behind the plate, 1-0. Tennessee team that doesn't steal a whole lot, just eight stolen bases this season, but Tierce does have two of them standing over a third, that second, excuse me. And now a driver's seat count to Peebles. Who doubled and scored as part of that three-run second inning for Tennessee. <laughs> Quickly, three balls and no strikes. And a four-pitch walk. Second walk issued by Borma on the bump. And this is not an offense that you want to let get some action. Got some traffic. Tennessee hitting 324 as a team, six in the conference. And they continue to charge up the SEC leaderboard and home runs. Now 28 long balls this season, second in the loaded SEC for Tennessee. One of those two dingers tonight. Came from this man, Dylan Dryling. Two run blast, the left center field tied the game at two. 0 oh, 1 to him. Oh. 
Tap it to first, Bishop charging in, flips to Borma, loses the foot race. The bases are loaded. A squimming infield single. And maybe a little miscommunication there at the end. Borma not sure if Bishop was going to try and come back to the bag. Fell behind in the foot race to Dryling. And then could not save it with the big last try to the last second. So they're loaded for the freshman. And Dean Curley takes a ball outside. One and O. Oh. Curley 0 oh for 1, grounded out to third, his first trip. Slider has been the put away pitch for Borma. But he's had to get ahead and work into pitcher's counts. One and one here. There is the slider. Crosses the back door for a strike. One and two. Oh, that is launched to left. Touch them all, Dean Curley. Grand slam. And the Vols have surged in front, 8-2. A big spot for the freshman, and what does he do? Deliver, in all caps. A left field laser. And Dean Curley has his fourth home run of the season as Tennessee has put up a five spot in the third with still just one out. Three home runs already for this potent Tennessee offense. The 0-1 to Ensley is a strike. Nancy got hit by a pitch. Later came in to score. This has been part of the MO of this Tennessee offense. The season just a dozen games old, but it is a team and a program built under Tony Vitello now at his seventh season where offense is contagious. Seems like when one guy gets going, the floodgates get opened. 2-2 pitch. Launch to Rivera, and he couldn't hang on to it, but it's an out. Line drive right there at the chest. Bishop able to keep the toe back on the bag. And there are two out for Christian Moore at the top of the order. Goes after the first pitch. Forget it. Oh, man. Christian Moore mashes one out of the park. Third home run of the half inning. And it's a 9-2 Tennessee lead. They are seeing it well out of the left arm of Owen Borma right now. Christian Moore picks up his third home run of the season. And 
when you think of home runs and you think of Tennessee, you think of this guy, Blake Burke. Comes up empty on a healthy first hack. Three home runs over the weekend in that series sweep against Bowling Green. And so Burke now just six long balls away from tying Luke Lipsius for Tennessee's all-time record. Seven long balls to become the new home run king, a feat that the junior will certainly achieve this season. Ball and two strikes. You feel for Borma, has just had to wear it here in a lengthy third inning. But he gets Burke on strikes for the second time today. Fourth strikeout on the hill for Owen Borma. Has retired all four that he has faced in an efficient 12 pitch outing thus far. There is a strike to Daniel Rivera. Now Sneed pitching with a whole lot of confidence and a really big cushion. Tennessee with three home runs and a six spot in the third. Highlighted by a Dean Curley grand slam, the true freshman. Promptly unloading the bases. And the 0-2 pitch. Rivera stays alive. Daniel Rivera 0 for 1. Struck out swinging. That was against the Tennessee starter Aaron Combs, who went two innings. One, two. Just outside, two balls and two strikes. And he stays alive. Sneed hasn't pitched in a while. It's been over a week. Last pitched against High Point. Which was a week ago, so I guess not full for a week. Three straight balls there, and the count runs full with one out on Daniel Rivera batting in the seventh spot. Payoff pitch, ball four. First Wildcat to reach against Nate Sneed is Daniel Rivera. Won't be able to climb out of the hole all at once. Need to start getting some traffic on the base pass. They're a team that can hit home runs. 20 homers, which is fifth in the Big 12 coming into today. But they mainly get on and steal bases. 35 stolen bases coming into the game. That's fifth in the country, leads the conference. Rivera, perfect six for six. That's tied for best on the team. He's over at first. And a 2-0 count to Rafael Pelletier. Cuts through 98. Three balls and a strike. Sneed kicks and fires. Strike two. Living in the upper 90s. Fastball running 97. Has touched 99 today. No triple digits yet. As time is called, maybe one of those pesky turf pellets in the eye of Pelletier. Game K State led 2 0 after half an inning, and they find themselves in a 9 2 hole. Runner goes, but it was ball four. Back to back walks issued by Nate Sneed. And the Wildcats 
have a little spark here at the top of the fourth. Two on with just one out. And now Frank Anderson, the Tennessee pitching coach, wearing his familiar orange hoodie, will rally the troops in the circle. Anderson has done a good job in his now seventh season. He came in with Took longer for the position players to walk in and walk back than it did for the conversation to take place. But a little breath of air in for this Tennessee defense. Two on, one out for Bishop. Set now. 1 0 offering. Down now, two balls and no strikes. Bishop lined out his first time, soft liner to right field. It was a nice play by the second baseman, Christian Moore. The TCU transfer was part of the all freshman team in the Big 12 there two years ago for the Horn Frogs. Back pick to first. Oh, they had the runner, but the ball got by Burt. And now everyone moves up 90 feet. Boy, Cannon Peebles caught Rafael Pelletier sound asleep as Burt came hustling in. And it was a surefire out. Just couldn't corral the throw down to first. And so runners move in to scoring position on the second Tennessee error of the night. Rivera at third, Pelletier at second. A 3-1 count to David Bishop. Needing first of his first strikeout tonight. Bounced up the middle. That'll score a run as Curley fires to first for the out. An RBI for David Bishop in the nine spot. And K-State picks up a run. Now 9-3. Did his job and drove in a run as Bishop picks up his fourth RBI of the season. And Ingram at the top of the order climbs back into the box, waved through a first pitch fastball, so it's nothing and one. Runner on third. One one pitch in the alley and left center hanging in the air. Ensley giving chase will not get there. One hops the wall. Pelletier scores with ease. A stand up double for Chuck Ingram. Now nine four. Drove it to one of the deepest nooks in the park. Sat on the changeup and sent it to the alley in left center. So that is double number six. That leads the Wildcats for Chuck Ingram. And Brendan Jones comes in with a runner in scoring position and two out in the fourth. Strike two and one. <laughs> 
two and two. Sneed looking to get out of the inning and limit the damage to two runs in. 2-2 two -two pitch, strike three, swinging. Jones down on strikes. That's the first strikeout in relief for Nate Sneed. Four lead into the home fourth. Billy Amick will lead off the Tennessee fourth after the ball sent nine runners to the plate in the third. So the day is done for Owen Borma on the mound for Kansas State. The Wildcats have made a call to the bullpen, and they'll call on the right-handed freshman, James Guyette, 6'3", 215 from California, prepped at Newberry Park. And just making his second appearance of the season. Pitched against Holy Cross last weekend, two and a thirds innings in relief where he gave up three runs on four hits, a walk, and three strikeouts. Part of what was a 13-10 loss by Kansas State. So he comes in to face Billy Amick, who's only seen two pitches tonight. Reached on a fielder's choice and then sent one into orbit. What will he do here? Take a ball. Ball and no strikes as Amick sends one high the other way, fading into the seats. Foul. Big part of that. ACC championship run for the Clemson Tigers last year. Billy Amick at 413 on the year. Just exploded onto the scene. And he's ahead two balls and one strike. He's considering a couple different schools, North Carolina, Florida, in the transfer portal, but ultimately signed with Tony Vitello and Tennessee. And boy, are they happy he did. Already seven multi-hit games through his first 12 on Rocky Top. And he's launched eight home runs to lead the team and pace this powerful offense. Lines it into left for a leadoff single there. Just sitting on the 3-1 pitch. Got a 3-1 fastball, did not miss. So Amick aboard as Kavaris Tierce digs in. One for two, has singled and came in to score as part of that Curly Grand Slam. Big spot here for the freshman Guyette. Very, very early in his collegiate career. And gets a chance to face some of the top bats in the SEC. Just needs to find the strike zone. He's behind 3-1 to Amick, yielded the single. 3-0 here to begin the Tierce plate appearance. On the 3-0 pitch, Tierce takes ball four. Third walk issued today by the Kansas State pitching staff. Two on with nobody out. Ball one to Robin 
Villeneuve. Ball and a strike. Villeneuve 0 for 2. Actually just one of two volunteers that's hitless so far tonight. I know we're just in the fourth inning. Third time through this Tennessee order. Only one that hasn't been on base in this one yet. Going to change here. Dumped in the left. That's a base knock. Amick coming home from second. Score standing up. RBI single for Robin Villeneuve. The balls jump to double digits, 10-4 lead. Villeneuve picks up his 11th run batted in this season. And now all nine in Tennessee's Batting nine have been on base. Eight have a hit. Peebles takes ball one. Cannon Peebles, the switch hitting catcher. So flips over to the left side this time. And there is a strike. Peebles had the distinction today of getting the Vol vibes. That's something they do in-house here at Lindsey Nelson Stadium where a player on this Tennessee team gets to share some of their pregame mix. Today it was Peebles, and he started it off with well, Mark Morrison, return of the Mac. Guyette searching for the zone on the mound. Sixteen pitches, four have been strikes. And that is the fifth as the count runs full. Got the runners caught. Tierce safe at third, then off the bag and called out. It was a swivel pickoff move from Guyette. And Tierce overslid the bag at third. Strong job by Rivera keeping the tag applied. Runners were breaking. And right here, he was safe. Had the swim slide around the tag. But to Rivera's credit at third, put the tag right back on. So that's how the first out of the fourth is recorded. Villeneuve did advance to second. So he's in scoring position as the count remains full. Seventh pitch of the battle. Upcoming two Peebles. And yields a walk. So another look at this pick off over at third. Tierce was on the move, comes swimming in. Left hand is on the bag there, but his body comes off the bag. Rivera sees it. And it was right in front of John White, the third base umpire. No question and no argument from Tierce. So he is tagged out for out number one. First and second with one down for Dryling, who opened the Tennessee scoring with a two-run homer back in the second inning. 
which at the time tied this game at two. K-State had two in the top of the first. And a hitter scout here. Guyette downhill. Big hack. Three balls and a strike. Three one pitch, Dryling pops it up. Left field, shallow. Ingram running in. Makes the catch. Two out here in the bottom of the fourth. As Dean Curley climbs back in. One for two, big grand slam, last inning. Squibbed foul. Curley coming in as the Number 33 shortstop in the country, according to Perfect Game. And he ropes one to deep left. Ingram racing back. He's looking up. It's gone. Two homer day for the freshman, Dean Curley. This time it's a three run blast. He's driven home seven, and it's a nine-run lead. No doubt about it. Right into the front shelf of the porch. And that is now five home runs tonight for Tennessee. And it's Hunter Ensley. Has a swinging bun in front of the mound. Tough play. He pulls Bishop off the bag. Ensley is safe. A swinging bunt in front of the plate. Guyet did a good job hustling to it, tried his best, and a good pick by Bishop to make sure Ensley didn't advance any further than first. Swing and a miss. Nothing had won to Christian Moore, top of the Tennessee order. No balls and two strikes. Moore has been aboard all three times. Two for two with a walk, a single, and a solo homer. One of five home runs tonight. And not even four full offensive innings for Tennessee. Five home runs, the most hit in a game this year by this volunteer offense. Maybe a sixth. Launched the other way. English at the track. And he makes the catch at the wall. So Guyette gets out of the inning. But Tennessee brings home Four more in. 
Top of the fifth, 13 to four. Tennessee in front. Nate Sneed back to work. Third inning, third inning in relief for the hard throwing right hander as Kalen Culpepper shimmied out of the way of ball one. Culpepper, 0 for 1 with a walk. Did come in and score a run. This is a game that started out 2 0 in favor of the Wildcats. They jumped aboard early in the first. But Tennessee bounced back and was able to take a 3 2 lead in the bottom of the second, and it's been all Vols since then. Tattooed foul. That is a long, long strike. Culpepper's had a strong career down in the purple and white so far. For all freshman team, his first season. That's sent to the gap. Ensley will chase after it. Won't get there. One hops off the top of the wall right at the yellow lining. And a leadoff stand-up double for Kalen Culpepper. <laughs> Honorable mention all-conference last season. Played for the USA Baseball Collegiate National Team over the summer. Actually led that squad in hitting. Case in point right there. Drives it to the gap. For his third double of the season. Brings up Brady Day. Who sends it up the middle to Curley. One on, one out. Yeah, it's Nick English. It takes high and tight ball one. Freshman right fielder 0 for 2 today. A strikeout and a flyout. Oh, no, they're going to say that grazed him. That was a call from home plate umpire Brian Cabrewer. Another look. Yep, just caught some of that inside arm. Top of the right shoulder, perhaps, and it puts two runners aboard for Kansas State with just one out. Shrank one to load liner. Good corral by Peebles. And it's one ball and one strike. Nate Sneed working his third inning in relief. Has not pitched in a week, so likely going to give a healthy amount of innings today for this volunteer staff as that is lifted foul. Longest outing of the season for Sneed was five innings. That was against Baylor at the very start of the season. Rifled up the middle, off the glove, and everybody is safe. A lobe liner. Limboing Nate Sneed. Just matrixed his way out of the way here. And nearly caught it for the most improbable of outs. Just one of those where your pure athleticism and reflexes take over. And the bases are loaded. Daniel Rivera sends one up the middle. Could be two. More shuffles to Curley. On to first. It's a double play. 4 6 3 to end the inning. 12th double play of the season. Starting the back half of this ball game. Welcome back to Lindsey Nelson Stadium. Great to have your company tonight. Mike Patel with you, along with our wonderful crew here in Knoxville as Tennessee carries a nine-run lead into the bottom of the fifth. Five home runs tonight for this Tennessee offense. The most they've hit in a game in 2024, just a dozen games into the year. 
And the man who might wind up as the program's all-time leading home run hitter. It's in the box now, Blake Burke. One for three tonight. An RBI double sandwiched by a couple of strikeouts. 1-1 one, one pitch, high and out. James Guyette back to work, a second inning in relief for Kansas State, the true freshman from California. Gave up four runs to this Tennessee offense in the fourth. Burke sends one down the left field line, and it fades into the corner. Two bounces off the wall. Burke headed to second. Here comes the throw. He slides in ahead of it. Lead off double for Blake Burke, his second two-bagger of the night. And stayed with it and found a huge hole on the left side. And he puts himself in scoring position for Billy Amick. Amick, two for three. A tape measure, solo homer in there. He singled and scored last inning. In the driver's seat, two balls and no strikes. High fly ball, playable in right field. English camping out under it and makes the catch. Burke tags from second, no throw to third. So he's 90 feet away for some extra insurance as Amick moves the runner. Runner on third, one out for Kavaris Tierce. Infield is shifting him. Three infielders on the right side of the diamond, all playing half in. No balls and two strikes. Burke standing on third after the leadoff double, advanced to third on the fly out from Amick. Tier sat the plate. One for two tonight. Guyette looking for his first strikeout. Swing and a miss, collects that first K. Takes something off of it, pretty looking pitch from the freshman, two out. Yeah, change up falling off the table there. And Tier said no answer. And out away from getting out of it after issuing or allowing the leadoff double. That's Robin Villeneuve takes a ball high. Villeneuve one for three in this one. An RBI single last inning. He later came in and scored. And takes a strike at the knees.
Big wide stance across the right hand batter's box. Yeah, this guy yet. Takes a deep breath, kicks and fires. The one, two. Been living in that low 90s range. Good velo here from the right handed freshman. Just working up a bulk of innings. Just his second appearance in his young K State career. Guy, the Wildcats going to lean on heavily throughout this 2024 campaign. 1 2 pitch. Strike three called. Breaking ball right over the front door inside corner. Kansas State coming into tonight seven and three. Winners of four consecutive games. They'll have to climb out of a big hole here if they want to make that five in a row. Tennessee riding a 10 game win streak. As they play game 10 of 15 in a row here at home. Leading into the start of SEC play. Knights need back to work in the sixth. His fourth inning in relief faces Rafael Pelletier. They had two balls and one strike. Pelletier has walked a couple times, come in and scored one of those four K State runs. Got his ahead again, three balls and a strike. Kansas State led by Pete Hughes in his sixth year leading this Wildcat program. And trying to get K-State back to the postseason. Last time the Wildcats were in the NCAA tournament was in 2017. Been there five times in program history, one time to the Super Regionals. That was in the early 2000s when they played the Corvallis Regionals in 03. But just trying to get back to the big dance, compete in a deep Big 12 conference. They were picked in the preseason to finish fifth in the Big 12. Pelletier walks for the third time tonight. He's drawn three of the five walks issued by this Tennessee staff, including a couple from Nate Sneed. And he's aboard with nobody out for David Bishop. 0 for 2 with an RBI. Another one up the middle. Curly charges on the second bounce and a double play. 6 4 3 this time. Good job fielding that high second hop by Curley charging in. If he waits for another bounce, they're likely not turning two up the middle. And instead, it winds up being a double play with plenty of time on the back end. Second consecutive inning with a double play up the middle. Stranded the base is loaded in the fifth and erases the early walk here in the sixth. One one count to the leadoff man, Chuck Ingram. Line to right, Tierce on the run, not gonna get there. One hops off of the wall, Ingram with a wide turnaround first, he'll stay there. Two out single. Th third hit of the night for Ingram. And a good throw in from Tierce fielding it off the wall to making sure it didn't stretch to extra bases. Brendan Jones lifts the first pitch high into the East Tennessee night. Ensley, the center fielder, camped out. And catches the third out of the inning. Sneed strands a runner aboard. Back inside Lindsey Nelson Stadium, we move to the bottom half of the sixth. Tennessee holding on to a 13-4 lead. Just had our first clean inning on both sides in the ball game. Scoreless in the fifth. So it's Cannon Peebles. He leads off the bottom of the sixth with a base hit into center field. P. 
Peebles has been on all four times tonight. That single with a double and a couple of walks. And he picks up his first hit from the left side. Switch hitting catcher. And he has been lifted at first for a pinch runner. As Bradkey Lori comes into the game. So Lori, the pinch runner, as Dryling takes ball one. No stolen a base attempts this season for Laurie over at first. A Tennessee team that steals a lot of bases. Dryling fouls it back. Two for three tonight, Dylan Dryling. Opened up the Tennessee scoring with a two-run homer back in the second. That tied the game 2-2. Smothered by Pelletier, but Laurie swipes second. Heads up base running as he scoots up 90 feet. And yeah, Pelletier does a nice job of blocking the curveball that was just buried in the dirt. Didn't quite make that full 60 foot, six inch journey. And Laurie in scoring position for Dryling, who sits ahead, three balls and a strike. Full count. Guy at working his third inning in relief for K State. Roughed up a bit in the fourth, four runs across for Tennessee, but did a really nice job bouncing back in the fifth, working around a leadoff double. And escaping the inning unscathed. No runs came home. Finished it with back-to-back -back K's. Good result from the freshman. Looking for strikeout number three. Dryling drives it to deep center field. Jones backpedaling. He's in front of the warning track. Makes the catch of the cap as Laurie tags and chugs into third. Just underneath it, a little bit of breeze blowing into the yard, and it's gotten a little cooler now. Started the game around 70 degrees, and is now dipped in below 60. But Laurie does advance over to third, tagging up on the fly ball. He's 90 feet away for Dean Curley, and what a night for Dean Curley. The true freshman, two for three, Two home runs, seven runs batted in. Grand slam and a three-run blast. Driver's seat, two balls and no strikes. Got to think anything good over the plate is going to yield a big-time cut. On the 2-0, Curley. <laughs> Lambs it back into the K-State dugout. Hot shot that sent the cat scattering. Thankfully, everybody out of the way. Nobody hurt. And we're all set for the 2-1. Two balls and two strikes. Now the SEC has implemented a 10 run rule where if a team is up 
by 10 or more after seven innings of play. That is the game. That 10th cushion run is 90 feet away. Curly to center field and deep. Jones on the way back, looking up, and he has done it again. Three home run game for Dean Curley. The freshman says, welcome to the show. to the deepest part of the ballpark. Oh, what a game for Dean Curley. He's driven home nine of Tennessee's runs. And now it is an 11 run lead. One out in the sixth, Ensley. Opposite field to the gap. One bounce off the top of the wall. Hunter Ensley around first. Standing in at second with a one out double. Opposite field cruiser for Hunter Ensley. It's his second hit of the night. And his third double of the season. He's in scoring position for the top of the order. And now a meeting on the mound for Kansas State. I'm from the freshman Dean Curley. Remember that name if you don't know it already. Christian Moore is a homer tonight. And a half sword through it. Guyette caught him with the off speed, nothing at one. Tipped back, oh and two. Moore racking up a number of accolades. He was on the Golden Spikes Award preseason watch list for National Player of the Year. Hanging in there, no balls and two strikes. Soul roller on the right side. Day to his left. Two down. Second appearance of the season for Buss. He threw a perfect inning in relief on Saturday in that win over UMass Lowell. So no record, Sterling triple zero ERA, just one inning of work. No traffic on the base pass there, one strikeout as Blake Burke ropes the first pitch foul. Burke two for four, two doubles, two strikeouts. And on a night where Tennessee has six home runs, Blake Burke not one of them. Long balls have come from five. Check that four different bats. Ball and a strike on Burke. Two out here in the home six. The runner on third. As that runs inside off the right arm of the sophomore Mason Buss. That's Hunter Ensley over at third for Tennessee. Bus fires, that is foul. 
Wasn't fouled by much. Half a baseball to the left, and it's Blake Burke's third double of the night. Instead, it's a 2-2 count with two out. Bus sets and the 2-2. Wing and a miss. Blake Burke strikes out for the third time tonight. And Mason Buss does his job in relief. But this is a Tennessee offense that has lit first few weeks of the season, but they have yielded six home runs to this Tennessee offense, where a whole lot of the damage has come from the freshman Dean Curley. New arm into the game for the Vols, third pitcher is the sophomore left-hander, Andrew Benke. And Benke makes his fifth appearance of the year, all in relief. Good start to this campaign for Benke in 2024. No record, but a 1.8 ERA. Five innings of work has given up one run. Four hits, two walks to eight strikeouts. Pitched two-thirds of an inning on Sunday in the run roll win over Bowling Green, a day that the ball sent eight pitchers to the hill. New catcher into the game defensively to make up the battery. It is the local boy, Cal Stark, into the contest to catch the senior product out of Farragut High School at West Knoxville. Juicy part of this order, three, four, and five. Kalen Culpepper sends it to second, and Moore snags it at the shoulders, one down. Wildcats need a couple runs to get inside that 10-run threshold here in the seventh. Shift on for Brady Day. And the reigning Big 12 Player of the Week takes ball one. Day had a really good weekend for K-State. Really good week. Two balls and no strikes. Eight hits in the series over UMass Lowell, a couple of doubles and a couple of home runs. Slugged 133 as he takes a strike. And he started off the scoring today. It was a two-run single on the top of the first that put Kansas State on the board early. Gave the Cats a 2-0 lead. But it has been all Tennessee since. Three balls and a strike. In the left, Dryling at the shoulders, two out. Bags are empty for Nick English. And a first pitch strike off the left arm of Banky. No for two tonight, English. He's been hit by a pitch. That is coming right back off the facade of the press box before Plink going back into the seats behind home plate. No balls and two strikes. Banky winds and delivers. The 0-2. Ground ball to third. Amick to his left, and the side is retired. Burke kept his foot on the bag. It's the lead of that 7-3 mark coming into tonight. But conference play starts this weekend. At number eight, Tennessee tonight, and then the Cats hit the road and take on the Tigers, number 10, Clemson. 
tomorrow afternoon, a matinee 3 o'clock start because they have to hustle home and begin a seven-game homestand, which kicks off with the Cincinnati Bearcats to begin Big 12 play this weekend. A couple big series coming up this season for K-State as Billy Amick lines it right to Bishop. Oh, man, he was ready. David Bishop. Alert over at first, and actually was not David Bishop. New first baseman into the game, Kyan Lotus. So, hey, welcome to the game, Kyan. Lotus takes over at first base and then taking over behind the plate. A new catcher for the Wildcats as well. That is Caden Phillips, the battery mate of Mason Buss, who got the final out of the sixth and comes back in here for the seventh. Buss has built up over his Kansas State career. Nineteen games last season in his true freshman year. Did have six starts. Went four and three, a sub four ERA in fifty innings of work. Just the second appearance here of twenty twenty four. Gavaris Tears standing in. And the one two on the way to him. Just low. So back to that K-State schedule. Tennessee tonight, Clemson tomorrow. They've got Texas at home in the Little Apple of Manhattan in late March. And then a big series in Fort Worth at TCU. The Horned Frogs fifth in the nation right now. And all the way to the Big 12 semis last season. 2-2. Two -two. Foul back. Meanwhile, you look at Tennessee, the SEC is loaded yet again. Six teams in the top ten, depending on which poll you check. Still a couple weekends until SEC play starts. They do welcome Illinois to town for a Power 5 weekend. Three games set here at Lindsey Nelson Stadium to close out a long homestand. Josh Elander down at third. No guidance on this one. Payoff pitch to the vet, Tierce. Popped up, center field, Jones. Two out. Bases are empty as Tennessee goes to the bench. And the sophomore Dalton Bargo gets a crack. Batting in place of Villeneuve. And Bargo fouls away the first pitch. First crack of the season here for Bargo. Back up the middle, knocked down by Buss. And a clean seventh inning. One, two, three for Mason Buss in the seventh. We've played seven here in Knoxville. And Tennessee leads 15 to four to Knoxville. A little chill in the air on this Tennessee Tuesday night. 15 to four, the ball's in front of the Wildcats as we advance to the eighth. Benke back to work for Tennessee. And he'll face the six, seven, and eight spots in this Kansas State lineup. First pitch of the eighth. Fly down to play, foul ball. Oh, nearly caught in the concourse. They scattered to the last second, didn't hang in there. And now the chase is on, all the young kids in the park trying to find the free souvenir. 
0-1 to Jaden Lobliner. Swing and just got a piece of it off the cap of the bat. Lobliner, a good start to this season. 359 batting average coming into today. 0 for 1 for 3 in this one. And finds a ball, one ball and two strikes. Super high in the left field eye. Air, dryling, underneath it for the first out. Low blinder retired. Banky is retired. All four he's faced in relief here for Tennessee. Bags clear for Daniel Rivera. Two bounces to third, Amick. Two down. And now Caden Phillips, who come, came on defensively last inning, makes his first trip to the plate. And Phillips takes the ball outside. Fourth game that Phillips is appearing in this year. He does have. One start, one for three at the plate, so he's hitting 333. As he takes up and in, two balls and no strikes. Two and one, change up over for Banky. Popped up into foul territory and will not stay in the field of play. Clatters into row four down the first base line. And the 2-2 pitch. Hit well, deep left. Dryly not chasing it. That's a home run for Caden Phillips off the bench. First home run of the season for Phillips. And a late charge into this K-State offense. Well, with two strikes. Left nothing in the tank. Strong swing. And Phillips makes it a 10 run ball game. That's a called strike to Kyan Lotus. Kyan came in defensively to play first base. And so Lotus into the game. And quickly to no two hole. Three for his first 12 offensively. So 250 early in this season. Both Phillips and Lotus couple of the first players off the bench for K State. As he spoils that one, and it remains nothing in two. Sophomore from Omaha, Lotus. Banky's 0-2 is outside. A ball and two strikes. Andrew Banky, the sophomore from the Mid-State. From Nashville, played at DCA, Donaldson Christian Academy. Strike three called. 
Top of the zone with the breaking ball, and it's the first strikeout for Andrew Benke. But a solo homer. Mason Buss back out there working in relief. He's done a fine job at ending in a third in relief. He's retired all four that he's faced. And Cal Stark will bat for the first time tonight. Stark came in a couple innings ago as a defensive replacement. And Stark takes outside from Buss. Stark two for his first 11 here in this senior campaign. Hard hit ball to third, two bounces to Rivera. Cross the diamond for the out. And there's one down. Another pinch hitter coming in here for Tennessee. It's Colby Backus. Gets ready to pinch hit. Backus the junior. Is three for his first six. Johnson City native. And one of many Walter State's products to make their way from Morristown to Knoxville. 0-1. Been a really good showing in relief for Buss. Right-handed sophomore for K-State. On the ground a second. Day. Two down. Well, if you want to sum up tonight in two words, it's Dean Curley. What a night for the freshman. A grand slam back in the third. Three-run homer in the fourth. And then a two-run blast to dead center field in the sixth. And he is on the brink of history. Takes a strike at the top of the zone. No player in Tennessee history has ever hit a four home run game. None of the sluggers to come through Knoxville. One ball and one strike. Already have seen a freshman nationally do that this season. Drew Burris at Georgia Tech last week. Could it be Dean Curley this week? Yes, it is. History. Oh, my goodness, almost. Warning track power. Wow. Almost right at the edge of the wall. Boy, he was close. Everybody in the ballpark, myself included, thought the freshman found his fourth long ball of the season. A foot, maybe two, from inching out over the right field wall. But he still does make some history tonight. First Tennessee freshman to have a nine RBI game, and he ties the school record for most home runs in a contest with three here tonight. And it'll be one to store in the memory bags if you are Dean Curley, Tony Vitello, and company. New arm into the game for the Vols. Fourth pitcher of the contest for Tennessee. It's the left-handed freshman, Dylan Loy. 
from just up the road in Pigeon Forge. Went to Pigeon Forge High, and Moy makes his fifth appearance of this young season. Does have a 1-0 record. No runs across, so a perfect 0.00 ERA and four innings of work. No runs, one hit, two walks, and five strikeouts. Opponents hitting 0-9-1 against Dylan Loy, the lefty, this season. Carson Queck, who came on last inning defensively, will bat first. And waves through the first offer. Quack looking. For a little bit of that pine tar spray. That looking for his first hit of the season. That's gotten in and out four games, but still hitless, 0 for 2 at the plate. Sophomore from just outside of Houston, the Woodlands in Texas. Loy. I had nothing in two. Just got a piece. Quite sanded in. And sends it high and foul. Still a ball and two strikes on Quack. As Loy winds and fires. We'll try it again. Strike three call. First punch out for the freshman, Dylan Loy, here tonight. One out in the ninth. Caden Carl at the plate came in in the bottom of the eighth to play center field. And he takes ball one. Just the second game of the year for Carl. As I said, one prior at bat did not have a hit. The freshman from Edmond, Oklahoma, getting some early action. So looking for his first collegiate hit. Redshirted last season for spending the summer playing in the Cal Ripken League, getting some valuable summer ball experience. Now trying to be an impact player, maybe work his way into the lineup some for K State and build out some of that depth for Pete Hughes. 3 1 here. 
Yeah, that's ball four, a one-out walk. State has gone back to the bench. Another pinch hitter coming in here. It is the grad student, Jaden Parsons, in the crack in the ninth. Ball one to Parsons. Also looking for his first hit of the season. Oh, for one, this Kirby Connell up and getting loose, the lefty. Two balls and no strikes to Parsons. On the 2-0 from Loy, Parsons thought about it, but thought better. And I got to say, Parsons probably on the short list on the all-mustache team in college baseball. Man from Kelowna in Canada and British Columbia. Works his way aboard. Four pitch walk. Back to back walks issued by Loy, the freshman on the hill. All right, Kansas State is a little bit of a rally brewing here in the ninth. Orlando Salinas gets his turn in the order now. Pinch hitting off of the bench. Salinas getting in for the first time this year. Inside, that gets away from Stark, the catcher. Both runners advance, both in scoring position. And that takes the traditional double play out of the question. Salinas sat the plate, started collegially at Oklahoma State one year there in Stillwater before making the move to the Little Apple of Manhattan, Kansas. Ball land a strike on him. Role player last year, 16 starts, 23 games in total. Where he hit 200, did have three homers, drove in 14 runs, so some pop in the left-handed bat of Orlando Salinas Jr. Two in scoring position. There is a strike, one and two. Tipped into the mitt, strike three. Second strikeout for Loy. And Tennessee is an out away from stamping a Tuesday night win at home. Got Salinas to chase. So Loyal look to record the final out against Mason Schwalbach. Another pinch hitter coming in. And Schwalbach takes strike one. One for four early in this year. The junior from Woodstock, Illinois, the McHenry County College transfer. 0-1. Swing and a miss. A little extra muscle behind that one from Loy. Loy will reset. Yeah. 
Winds the 0-2. Strike three, swinging. Yeah, the freshman fired up as he punches out three in the ninth. That works around 